Hello everyone, Dan here from SurePT. Thought I would show you what happens at the conclusion of a trip. Basically making sure that there's no water on the inside. Next thing we do is quickly vacuum it out. Also show you what it looks like on the inside where the water would actually collect and then some quick little painting. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so what we gotta do here is just drain the water out of it. And I have no clue if there's any water in it or not. Forgive me, it's kind of a pain in the butt. To try to do this with one arm. So all you do, just plop on um, this and plop out these two different places right here. Hopefully you can see this. I don't know if there'll be any water in these or not. They're just bung plugs, just, just like a regular boat. We were on the Wisconsin River, as you know, for quite a while. Nothing in that one. There's another one right here, and there's also one in the back. I'll show you that in a second. There's some water. So a little bit of the oil comes out too, that's kind of nice, cleans it out in the bottom. Not a lot. I would guess if we measured that, that was probably about a quart. It looks like everything is pointing to the front. This, uh, this one that's right here, hopefully you can see that. Um, there's also one in the back and right now it seems like it's tipping a little bit this way. We're just going to leave this one off. And I will open up the back and we'll see if there's any in there. Well, there is. So we definitely had some water there yet too. There is a little compartment that's like right there that actually stops it. So the water probably came in the back door. Uh, I don't think there's any leaks on this thing but there could be some small ones. And again, that's from being out in the water, and I haven't emptied these for quite a while, too. There could have been water in there from before. We'll leave those open, let everything drain. You can kind of see the water coming from the front again, too, so it's probably just letting things move around a little bit. And I'll keep futzing in the shirt, which will probably let some more water come out. So let's get the bugger vacuumed out, get the sand cleaned up. Again, I wish I would have captured this before, before I vacuumed some of that, but you can see some of the sand that's like, um, you know, on the seats themselves. That is from standing up and like going out through the top. We'll see what's in the back when we get back to there. So it's a little loud right now, but it cleans up really, really nice. Hopefully you can see that. And I try to clean off the seats before I pull them out. I just found over time that this sand, you might as well get it while you can. Take out the seats of the Sherps real easy. All they do is tip forward and they come right out. Oops, drop that baby. But all there is that holds them in is these little clips that are right here and it just sets on the back. So I'm gonna get that other seat, pop up in there, we'll get that uh, all vacuumed. So the seats again, it's pretty simple. They come in, and as you can see right here, 
we got these little clips that the front bottom of the seat has to just go in so it's not too hard. Slot right in. That's done. Done. Red button. All right, so again, what we I always try to do with the straps in the back is I just put them in here so they don't flop around. Pull that handle up, and then on the inside, there's a small little cable you pull. This pulls down. And if you look in here, you can see, hopefully, maybe I'm not going to capture on the camera, but there's a small amount of sand up there. That's one of the challenges with the Wisconsin River. So I'll jump up there, be back with you in a second, and we'll get some of that stuff vacuumed out. Some of you are probably wondering right now, we got that water that came down to the bottom of that chirp. So where the heck is that water at and what kind of issues could it arise? So to get in to see the bottom of the chirp, if you just take off this, uh, whatever you want to call it, storage container, which also doubles as a seat, as you can see right now. And right now that is extremely heavy because I have a loaded full of stuff. And what you can do is pull up this panel. I hope you can see this. You see the panel? I'm hoping I can get this out without having to move that darn thing. I think I can. Okay, so with that panel off, this is what it looks like down there in the bottom. Way down in the bottom there is where that bung plug is. It's way in the back in the corner. You can't actually see it. So there was water that was collected down there. So with that maybe gallon, and I think that's excessive, that was in there, it wasn't even a quarter inch deep in the bottom, and it doesn't really hit anything. So all is good. Reminder, this is the tube for the exhaust gases. So the exhaust goes into that tube, and when it, actually the air would come out of that tube, and that's what fills up the tires, and it equalizes the tire pressure amongst all of them. They're all connected on one. What happens is over time is this, this black stuff ends up coming off. So all I do is get just basically spray on bed liner and then that's how I fix it and I have to do that a couple of times a year it's not that big of a deal the only issue is making sure you remember that you painted it Oh, there's to it.